Thanks for joining us on another Hunter ADOS training video. Today we've got a 2020 Subaru, uh, Subaru Ascent. This one was really T-boned back here in the left rear corner. And a great shout out to all these body shop guys and beautiful men and women who fix these cars to make them look like they were never in an accident. But however, because there was an impact, they had to replace the blind spot monitor sensor back here in this left rear corner. That's where they're located. So you got a left and you've got a right. Today, we're gonna demonstrate how to calibrate the left one. The procedure would be the same. You're just gonna switch over to the right side, keeping your space requirements the same on that side as well. So stay tuned. We're gonna show you how to do the blind spot monitor on a Subaru next. As we said in the past, make sure you've got a big open area, good lighting. Make sure all the tires have been set. You know, but the ADOS link's gonna tell us that anyways, just some general reminders for you as well. I did ask the body shop and did verify that they also did the alignment on this vehicle because that should be done as well as this one had some real bad suspension damage as well. So they did align it, so we're good to go with that. No lights on the dash, anything like that. But remember, anytime you start, Doing an ADOS calibration, always start with a pre-scan. Make sure you select all of them. I wanna make sure there's no DTCs or anything that's related to the damage that happened that could impact or hinder the ability to actually calibrate this system. Now select pre-scan on your ADOS link, press continue, and it's gonna go through the entire controllers and check for any DTCs. It's also gonna build a nice report. It's key to do a pre-scan and a post-scan after your calibration. This way you can have a successful report that can be generated to be given to your customers and kept for your shop records. We're gonna let this go through the all the modules. It does take a little while, but remember with the power of editing and the power of videography, it just goes like that. So there were no DTCs related to the blind spot monitoring system, which means that I'm ready to start calibrating. Let's go ahead and get an ADOS calibration and we're gonna select the blind spot monitoring. Hey, if you ever wanna know how to do the front facing camera, that Subaru EyeSight, we have that video for you as well. You can find it on the Hunter YouTube learning channel or on their brand new Hunter University website where you can sign up for as a technician to watch all of these videos and get credit from Hunter for this. It's a great way to get your uh, resume pad there a little bit, so check it out. So we'll go into blind spot monitoring. Like I said, I'm gonna do the left today. If you can do the left, you can do the right. It's pretty easy. We'll select the left one and it's gonna tell us exactly what we need to be able to perform this. And you see, I have everything already laid out for the calibration that I need. I need the corner reflector. I need a plumb bob. Uh, you need your distance laser. A light will help as well, because you'll see we're looking for some weird spots on this car that you may not have seen in the past from other videos or other calibrations that you've done. So I've got everything set out that I need. Remember that this is gonna have to be done anytime the sensor is reinstalled after removal, or like I said, it was involved in a collision such as this vehicle. Of course, you've got your required preconditions. The ADOS link tells you that every single time, level floor, no excessive weight in the vehicle. Make sure there's um, free of metal objects and, and everything that we have seen before in the past and that you are well used to as well. And now we've got our calibration space requirements. You can see I have a lot of space around me to do this. Even though I'm only focusing on the left rear corner, I do need a little bit of distance to set up that reflector. And you can see how much we do need, two, eight, and six meters. We have plenty over here. We're gonna press continue and start doing the setup of this actual corner reflector. So the first thing it's gonna tell us to do is find a body bolt underneath the car. <laughs> which is kind of odd, but I, I promise you, we'll get, a, we'll get a good image of that that you'll be able to see. There's a body bolt that you look for. Then you're gonna hang a plumb bob from there, kind of line it up, put a piece of tape down and mark that. That's what I'm gonna do now. 
That body bolt, I can see it right here, almost at the edge of this tire. So you kind of got to look where that body bolt is, kind of line it up the best you can. Get your plumb bob, and now I'm going to mark that with a piece of tape. Let me do this first. Line it up. It's a little tricky to see, but once you find it, it's not too bad. So now what we're going to be looking for is actually a clip that's underneath the bumper. And again, trust me, we'll get a close up for you. We're going to hang the plumb bob straight up and down with that and make another mark on the floor. So what I found, it's right here. So of course, let me get my tape ready first. So it's right here underneath. Kind of line those two up over here a little bit more. Put a piece of tape and go ahead and mark it. That'll be the last I needed the plumb bob, but you still need your tape and a marker, so keep that handy. We'll press continue. So now this is when we really gotta get our tape measure out and create the position where my corner reflector will sit. From the A spot, we're going uh, all the way for 4678. And from this spot, I'm coming over here, 1818. And I'm gonna intersect those. So come back now. How do you do that? Well, it's not too bad. Because again, I know the sensor is right about in there. So I know where I should be intersecting when I do this. Approximately somewhere over here. You can look, just make sure your sensor is pointed right at that. Again, we'll get into the fine details of it, but I, this is the kind of angle that you're wanting here, right off there. So I'm gonna go 18 over, 46, 78 over, and create another spot on the floor where my corner reflector will stand. And of course, I'm gonna need to move that. I'm gonna start with the 1818 first, a little easier. Now we're gonna run that tape measure from point A all the way back here, get an intersection. So it can be a challenge running the tape measure by yourself. So we know the 1818 spots already created. I'm doing 46, 78. So that was there. I'm gonna double check that again one more time just to make sure. And I'm still at the 1818 that I need. Move that up just a little bit. So I've got my mark finally right there. And that's where I'm gonna line up. The corner reflector in the next step. So now go ahead and put your corner reflector in the position where you marked. Set the corner reflector to zero and level your stand. You've got your level pegs down here on the bottom. I'm not level, so I need to level this.
Perfect. Now we're level, press continue, move on to the next step. We're gonna get our um, height now. So we're gonna slide this over the reflector and using the knob on the back, I slide it up and down so you get the actual height you need of 601.5 millimeters. So I'll drop that down to there. Right on the money. Now you go ahead and, and remove that. And move on to the next step. At this point, we're set up and ready for calibration. And it tells you to make sure that there's nobody in the area, nothing blocking it. I'm actually going to head and slide my handy dandy tray over here out of the way as well, just to make sure that there's nothing could possibly mess with this. So you can see I moved out of the calibration area far enough away and I removed that my handy uh, tray or cart that I was using. So we'll press continue. And at this point it says switch, ignition switch is on. I'm gonna double check, but of course it is on. We'll press continue. It says the same thing again. Make sure that nobody enters the area, close all doors, press continue. And it's gonna go through the process. All right, I had a successful calibration. Now it's gonna tell me to turn the key off, which will do that. Uh, has us wait for 10 seconds. Then the key goes back on. And that's it. I had a successful calibration. It gave me the report that I needed to prove that the calibration was successful and it just obviously kicked me back, right back to the front, to the home page again of the ADOS calibrations on the ADOS link. Again, now that we're done with that, as always, if you gotta do the right side, go ahead and do that. If you're all set up, easy to do. Once you're done, as always, test drive the vehicle. Make sure the system is operating as designed before you return it to the customer and don't forget your post scan as well. If you want to learn more ADOS calibrations featuring the DOS 3000 and the ADOS link, make sure you check out the Hunter YouTube learning channel, subscribe and like it, and you will see that I have done quite a bit of these videos if you haven't already been watching in the past. And if you need to know how to do the eyesight, that video can be found there as well. Or also check out the Hunter University. It is free for you to sign up and they have a ton of great info that you as a technician can use to gain more skills. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next calibration.